Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with Developer University. For more of my training videos for beginners, please visit me at devview.com. Next, we're going to talk about how code files are organized into projects and solutions, and then where you can actually find these projects and solutions on your hard drive. So whenever we created a new console project, the program.cs file was opened for us automatically in the main area in Visual Studio. And that's one of the things that project templates do for us whenever we choose File New Project and we see the new project dialog and we choose a project template, uh, they provide a great starting point for the type of application that we want to build. Uh, it includes files with boilerplate code, important settings, and other resources that we might need whenever we're building that type of application. So uh, as you can see, we're working inside of this file in the main area and there's a, a series of tabs. Again, this isn't intended to be an overview of Visual Studio, but it's important to note that the names of the code files that you're working on are contained inside of those tabs. Uh, and if you take a look over to the right hand side, here is the Solution Explorer window. Uh, and it has a tree-like structure of all the items that are kind of contained inside of our project. Now, again, as I said at the outset of this course, this isn't intended to, to provide a tour of Visual Studio per se. Uh, and there are other resources on Microsoft Virtual Academy that can really help orient you. Uh, to using Visual Studio and the various windows and functionality that it contains. But the Solution Explorer is probably the most important part of Visual Studio next to this main area where you'll usually see the text editor and other designer windows. So simply put, the Solution Explorer is our main navigational device to the other files and settings that comprise our program. So you can see here that uh, there is a program.cs file. Now if I were to close the program.cs tab in the main area, I can always get back to it and open it up again by double clicking it inside the Solution Explorer. All right, you can see it's open once again. Now files and important settings are organized into a concept called projects. So you can see here this word hello world is actually a project. You can see there's a little C-sharp icon next to it letting us know that this is a C-sharp project specifically. Uh, and projects get compiled into a single .NET assembly which we'll talk about later. Furthermore, one or more projects are organized into solutions and you can see in the Solution Explorer we have one solution here at the very top, solution also named Hello World that contains one project. Now, in many cases as you're getting started, you're only going to have one project inside of one solution. But as you come to build more complex applications over time, it's highly likely that you're going to need to manage multiple projects that are somehow related. Now again, the reason might not be obvious at this point, but as you continue to learn C Sharp and how to build more complex applications uh, for you know, large companies or for yourself, this becomes a crucial code management strategy. But just for now, accept the fact that there's this extra layer of a solution and one solution can contain one or more projects and the projects will contain then all of the code files and the settings and the like that will be used to create an actual executable program. So trust me, uh, these concepts will become more important uh, after we get past the basics. Now the big question at this point should be, where are all these projects and solutions and files actually stored on your hard drive. I mean, can we see them? We can see them in the Solution Explorer. Where are they actually on your hard drive? Well, when we created this Hello World project, uh, we merely provided the name of the project, you'll recall, and then I said go ahead and accept the other defaults. By default, Visual Studio will put your projects into your Documents folder. So if you take a look here and we navigate into the Documents folder, uh, it will put your projects into whatever 
version of Visual Studio you're currently using. So you can see I have side-by-side -side Visual Studio 2013 and 2015. Uh, we're using 2015 for this series, but it could be a future version of Visual Studio. Uh, you'll look in that particular folder for your version of Visual Studio. And as we drill in, there will be a projects folder. And as you drill in, you can see that by default, when we created our new project, it put it here in our document slash Visual Studio, whatever, uh, whatever version slash projects folder. Okay, so as I add more projects, this obviously will be filled up with uh, folder names for those projects. Uh, and it's important to note that whenever you create a new project, you don't have to create it and put it right here. You can put it anywhere. Uh, and so to keep things organized, you're typically going to put them, keep them in the same place. Now, furthermore, you can actually open up a project that saved anywhere on your computer as well. So, for example, I have this, uh, uh, in this course, I'll supply the projects after I record the video, I'll zip them up and, and you'll be able to download them and, and then open them up on your own hard drive and then walk through them and to, to better understand them. And so just to kind of demonstrate how you do this, I have this project called, uh, is zipped up into a file called example.zip. And so what I'm going to do is actually right click this and select extract all. And then in the extract compressed zip folders, uh, I'm just going to put this uh, uh, on my root. So C colon slash example and then click extract. And so now you can see that on my local hard drive I have an example folder and inside of that folder there is a uh, another folder with a file called example.sln. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I can either double click this .sln file to open up uh, the the solution inside of Visual Studio like so. All right, or I could go to File, Open, Project Solution, and then navigate uh, to that directory using the Open Project dialog, if it'll let me. Okay. All right, and unfortunately, it's a little bit too large for the recording area, but then I would just simply select um, the solution that I wanted to open from this dialog and then uh, and then click the open button. All right, let's go ahead and close that. And let's shut down this copy of Visual Studio. And I want to get back to where we were just a moment ago in our documents, Visual Studio, in my case, Visual Studio 2015 projects folder. And uh, here are a list of all the solutions in our project folder. And so uh, just kind of want to walk our way through this. Uh, this first folder here will contain our solution files. So there's this .sln file, which is a solution file. It contains information about all the projects that are under this umbrella solution. Okay, And we could actually open this up and look at it inside of Notepad. Uh, and it's simply just a configuration file. There's nothing all that special about it. You certainly don't want to make any changes to it, uh, but it's going to have information about uh, all of the locations for the various projects that are associated with this solution. Uh, any global settings and, and some of these things won't really be useful to us until we get deeper into our understanding of, of compilation and things of that nature. But Inside of the solution folder is a second folder, which is actually going to contain the project files. And so here we have a hello world.csproj, which is the uh, a project file, the C sharp project file. And this file will contain, um, let's open that up as well with Notepad. It'll contain uh, references to things like all the files that are associated with this project and any of the settings and any other metadata. Again, information in here that you certainly don't want to edit and uh, you don't want to accidentally make any changes to it whatsoever. Um, but I just wanted to make you aware of it, that there's really nothing magical going on. There's just these configuration files that, that contain information about your project. And, and as you make settings on the project level, uh, those will be saved inside of that CS project.
And then finally, there's this bin folder here, and the word bin typically is short for binary, uh, which denotes that this is where a binary version of your application will be stored. So the process of compilation, it takes your source code, and which is human readable, and it's going to convert it into a format that is machine readable or understood by a machine, your computer. And so if we were to take a look inside of this folder, we would see that there is a debug folder. And so this folder is created for us whenever we started debugging our application. It creates a temporary version of our application for debugging purposes, which we'll talk about later. If we drill into that, you'll see that there is actually an executable file and several, several other um, uh, helper files for the purpose of debugging. We'll talk about these later. If I were to double click the hello world.exe, it actually executes our application. All right. Uh, and so, you know, compiling your code into a working application is the end goal, but I don't want to talk about uh, compilation just too much yet or about creating a debug version versus a release version of your of your .NET assembly of your compiled code. Uh, I think you're going to get a better appreciation for those ideas after we get past some more of the basics. So what I want to do is just stop our conversation about the Venn directory right now. We'll come back to that a little bit later. But you're doing great. Let's continue on. We'll start learning more C Sharp now that we have some of these tangential topics out of the way. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks.